Good morning. Okay, we got you, Nada. We're missing Cash, Elsie, and Reza, and Brian. Boy. Sue, so did you want to um, wait for a little while? Um, technically, we're live on television right now. Okay, I want, I, I'd like to get these people on board. Um, okay. All right, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, this is a special meeting of the Board of Directors on Wednesday, August 19, 2020 at 10 a.m. It's a virtual meeting and for the budget pressure. Um, thank you for the uh, television people for being on board. We appreciate your help. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? I still move, Juanita. I second it. Carl, okay. Is there any discussion since it's a very short agenda? It's by acclamation then. I want to thank staff for putting together this budget. I'm not sure this timeline was an improvement. It gave us, it was going to give us more data, but this year it was not useful as it would have been in a normal year. We felt uh, we had to call a special meeting for M and C to go over what had not been scheduled. Uh, things to think about for next year is the only reason why I'm bringing this up is because we need to look at the schedule for next year. We are making progress and I want to make sure that everybody's aware. Okay, um, Chris, are there any member comments that um, that on items not on the agenda? Hi, Sue. So yes, there's one member comment from the community. And if it's OK, I'll go ahead and read it. Please do. So the email is from Doug Rook, uh, 30F, 30, the unit is 30-F is in Frank. And it says, good morning, directors and staff. Spending almost 200000 on gutter cleaning seems excessive to me. I've seen many gutter products advertised lately that make gutter cleaning unnecessary. Why do not we look into that option? Is it true that we spend about $2,000 for a washing machine in United? Is it true that we spend $700 per machine just for the coin mechanism? Wouldn't it be simpler and considerably less costly to just offer free washing like they did here in the early days? You would not have this complicated quarter shortage. The expense of two men and a truck and a collection and tabulation of the quarters would be eliminated. The jamming coin mechanism that prevents machine usage would end. There would be no thieving, no thieves breaking into the coin boxes. 
please crunch the numbers and see how much simpler and less expensive the laundry would actually cost. If that, doesn't, if that does not compute, please look at the option of using machines that accept tokens instead of coins. Many places use them quite successfully. It's much less expensive. Thank you. I guess we're on to review of the budget. Oh. Who's going to be the presenter, Jeff or Betty? Sue, sorry, there's one Wait, more. Chris? Sorry to interrupt. There's one more that just came oh. in. And this one okay. is from a member, uh, Carol Cooper. And it says, to the board, all clubhouses have been shut down since about March 12th. Ergo, no expenses for light, air conditioning, water, manager, or cleaning have been incurred. It is my understanding that most staff has been furloughed. Owners have still paid their usual assessment fees to our HOA every month. I suggest and request a lowering of our fees in 2021 since we should have a large reserve by now. Why not return it to us instead of finding ways to spend it? Thank you. Hey, thank you. Um, we, um, I'm going to say that we'll look into the washer problem. I'm sure Ernesto has something to say about gutter cleaning. And we cannot return money to people. Our governing docs does not permit us. So it will be going into our reserve and contingency fund. So that answers those questions, I believe. Um, okay, we are ready for the uh, review of the United 2021 business plan version. Sue, if I can just make a comment um, sure. to let you know that Kelsey no. is in the traffic hearing. Yeah, I, I spoke to her. Okay. I'm surprised Cash hasn't called in. But that's okay. And I can never get Brian on the phone, so we're moving onward. Okay, who's, who's up? All right, uh, Sue, the, good morning. This is Jeff Parker. Um, I'm going to start off the presentation and then turn it over to Betty on some items, and then um, we'll be uh, glad to answer any questions that the board has and or any other comments that we get um, in, in the chat room. Um, so with um, with that, I would um, want to uh, thank um, um, President Margolis and the um, United Board of Directors for your input and your work um, putting this budget together and working with our uh, staff here, uh, with our finance staff and um, CEO's office. Um, as Sue mentioned, um, having even a special meeting to talk about MNC issues. Um, and, and that was with Sue and, and Carl and the rest of the MMC group um, that participated in that. And we, we do appreciate um, of that effort to um, move us towards um, our presentation of version one, which occurred, as you know, um, back a couple of weeks ago uh, when we had the United presentation on the 23rd of July. We introduced version one, which had a proposed assessment increase, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Then we got specific direction from you as the board at that version one meeting to go back and um, see what modifications could be made in direction to try to get the assessment uh, lowered down to where we would see in the 2021 year a, um, a zero assessment increase uh, compared to the 2020 um, budget year. So um, we are here today. Obviously, this is um, uh, the, the 19th, um, and this is your televised version two uh, budget meeting. Uh, we anticipate after um, going through all this that the um, we get a, a resolution um, and a vote from the board to adopt this budget. And then the final action is that you formally adopt a resolution at your um, September meeting but um, we are looking for a actual vote on the budget at the end of the presentation. So with that, I'll start going through the items. Um, United's basic assessment history is the first chart I wanted to bring up. Um, as, as you can see, um, we have in front of you, um, those that can see the PowerPoint presentation, 
the 2021 proposed um, assessment is at $396.38, which, as I indicated, is a uh, net zero increase from the 2020 uh, assessment of um, $396.38 in 2020. Uh, the um, chart also kind of gives you a little bit of a history as to 2017, it was um, 363.56, and, and over since 2017, it has grown to be at this 396.38 number. Um, the um, this was achieved doing um, due to offsetting expenses, um, major components of that uh, increase in outside services expenses of 686,000 or nine dollars per man or per month due to the movement of the damage restoration services previously paid from contingency fund into operating. And then the second thing was we increased an insurance expense of 287,000 or $3.78 per manner um, due to continued changes in hazard and liability market conditions. We then followed the decrease in contributions to the contingency fund of 759,000 or $10 per manner due to the movement of da the damage restoration that we talked about um, previously paid out of contingency fund. And we'll walk through these. I'm just wanting to make um, sh you sure that the, so then the net, um, the decrease in net allocation to the mutual of 193,000 or $2.54 was also due to the adjustment allocation to the mutuals based on service levels. We went back after version one for all of the um, United, GRF, and third, and reevaluated and made sure that our service levels and the charges against those service levels was accurate and appropriate. So we did make some adjustments based on that. Next slide. So the United total basic assessment history, um, this is a combined with GRF. Um, for the 2021 is uh, $601.98. Uh, GRF um, has also um, maintained a zero assessment increase in, in their proposed um, budget or adopt, approved budget. Um, so with um, if United moves forward with theirs, there would be um, relative to the 2020 budget the 2020 budget would be identical as far as assessments and there would be zero increase this year. Doesn't mean you don't have an assessment. $601.98 is your total assessment. It's just that this year, 2021, will have no increase. On the next slide, um, and we've shown you this before, this is the staffing of full-time equivalents within the organization. We started with um, going back to 2012, where we had 749, and we're now at 728 proposed in 2021. So we are evaluating that on an ongoing basis. Obviously, some of it's because of outsourcing, uh, some of it's because of just changing in operations, um, but we are trying to um, be as efficient as possible and whittle down full-time equivalents where possible. Next slide. Breaking this down into um, the offices and various departments, I'll give you kind of an overview as we have before. In the office of the CEO and the second line media and communications, we um, created a new media and communications department. Um, with that, we shifted employees that were formerly budgeted in the CEO's office over into me media and communications. It's the reason why it's not identical to the 2.94 is that in when media and communications was formed, they also took over the responsibility of cable television and that cable television had um, staffing um, where we could reduce a position there. And so the net change is 1.83 in media communications and a reduction 2.94 in the CEO's office. In information um, services, um, there's a half a position um, that was reduced. In general services, there is 5.57 full-time equivalent positions. Uh, three of those were um, outsourced in our janitorial night crew, 
As we indicated, we are looking at areas where we can contract services at a better um, rate. So that's where you're seeing um, three of those uh, positions. And then we decreased 2.57 full-time equivalents due to lower bus driver hours uh, within, within uh, general services. In financial services, we um, status quo with regards to uh, um, our operations there. And in security services, you see that we're going to be reducing one position in, in that department. In landscaping services, the net change is 3.50. Uh, this, this occurs in two factions. Um, one, we're outsourcing of eight positions in our tree maintenance operation, which um, was then offset by adding a landscape manager and a renovation division. This is a new operation for landscaping, which will improve um, taking areas where we want to um, have some areas of turf removed and or areas that have just died off and we're renovating those areas. This will be a specialized crew that will be going around and just doing that type of renovation work, which we're, um, we want to improve our service level in that area. Um, before, this was handled by crews whenever they had a chance to get to it. Um, this is going to be a dedicated um, crew that will um, increase our efficiency with regards to um, renovation of um, areas that need renovation and also turf removal, which should help reduce our water consumption in, in the future. In recreation services, we have a reduction in four um, positions, the reduction, reduction in FTEs associated with the closure of recreation facilities. Um, as I had, for those that, from the United Board that participated in the GRF um, budget, the, the GRF budget is based on the fact that we do not anticipate opening up all of the recreation facilities and being in full operation until March of 2021. And as such, we budgeted appropriately for a reduction in service levels um, that would include um, between now and that point in time, which has the impact on the full-time equivalent recreation services. In human resources, we stayed status quo with regards to numbers of staffing. And in maintenance and construction, um, you see a reduction in 7.4 um, full-time equivalents. That um, has the impact of removal of two union steward positions, um, reorganize, reorganizing, including addition facility uh, engineer, which is an ad. Um, we separated our permits and inspections and damage restoration. Um, those in, um, that are heavily involved um, on the United Board um, with MNC know that we had under one manager previously um, both um, damage restoration and our permits and inspection process. Um, it was not working. Um, and we had to make uh, some managerial changes there, which we're still in the process of making. But we have split that operation into two and under two managers separately. And, uh, and that is um, going to help, I believe, in, in being more efficient and more appropriately managed. So with that, um, there will be actually three um, strong managers under Ernesto with regards to our operations um, in damage restoration as well as permits and inspections alterations and also our um, operation field services. We have also a reduction in seven full-time equivalents in the carpentry paint and interior components due to a change in a 15-year paint cycle in third mutual. Um, this is something that um, I think at some point in time, United will be uh, looking at in this next year as well. However, at this point in time, we're budgeting the same operation for United, but third has moved forward in going towards a 15 year um, paint cycle. So that's um, it for the, that's the reduction in the 23.15 uh, positions, uh, full-time equivalent positions in the organization. All right, moving on to your uh, United business plan um, per man or per month kind of gives you an idea of how, how this all uh, lays out. So non-assessment revenue at the top, 
Um, the 2021 plan um, does show a slight increase in our projected um, non-assessment revenue. Uh, this was um, a um, 42, um, basically when it goes towards the assessment, it reduces it by 42 cents. Um, total expenses um, also on, uh, increasing um, from 252.92 to 263.34, which is ten dollars and 42 cents. Net operating um, is um, that compensation that 42 cents. So net operating expenses is going up um, ten dollars per per man or per month from a just a pure operating perspective. When we then go to the next line, which is your reserve funds, 152 to 152, that's a zero. And then the contingency fund, um, the 2020 plan had a $10 charge to the contingency fund, and the 2021 plan has zero um, assessment um, in charge against the contingency fund increase. So that's, a, that's actually a decrease of $10. So the $10 that was in the net operating compensated by the reduction in the contingency fund of $10 gets you a um, total um, basic assessment of $0 increase for the 2021 year. And as the line right above that states, GRF has um, done the same thing. They are at 205.60 and with a zero increase. So your overall basic assessment combined of the two is 601.98 which is a zero assessment increase for 2021 year. So the next chart talks about the projected insurance expense and I'm gonna turn this over to Betty and she can walk you through this PowerPoint. Your entry is not valid. The insurance portion of your budget has been a major focus of the boards this year as we approach the policy renewal date as of October 1st. As such, we wanted to include a slide here to show just the insurance amounts, excluding medical and workers' comp. We already know that the budget is 1.5 million in the current year is insufficient to cover the, the renewal costs we experienced towards the end of last year, and the board has funded this shortfall with a supplemental appropriation. Market conditions and updated property values are driving yet another costly renewal this fall, and we show a projected budget of just over $3.8 million. Although these costs will vary by manner, the average is approximately $50 per month in total. And although the basic assessment is planned with no increase, as Jeff mentioned, each of you will see a change in your bottom line assessment when you get that letter that comes out with the budget mailing in November because the cooperatives, as you know, uh, we have to pass along the property taxes from the county tax assessor. And so you're used to seeing a change in your property taxes that is unique to your manor. And then also this year you're going to see an increase in the property insurance and um, that's going to vary. So what we showed on the slide here in the orange font, if you can see it on the line that says property insurance, we think there's going to be an average of about $39, $40 per man or per month on your property insurance uh, line item of your assessment letter. So while we're focusing on the basic assessment today that's common to everybody, I just wanted to make sure people understood the total cost of insurance um, are expected to go up to near $3.8 million, and that will impact your, your bottom line assessment based on the value of your home. And so um, we, we won't have the negotiations finished. We won't have proposals submitted from the carriers until about 30 days before renewal. And so um, September 1st is just too late for us to get it into the budget. So these are estimates. And so if the renewals come in more favorable than what we've anticipated, then the numbers will not be this high. And conversely, um, if we have to um, pay more than we'll approach the board um, about addressing the costs that exceed the budget. But for now, th these are the budget assumptions. And then um, going on to the next slide, changes from version one, 
for those of you who are watching uh, from the TV audience, this is probably the first time that you are seeing the business plan, and we're about to present it in detail. But for those of you who have been attending the prior meetings, this has been a long process, although abbreviated this year, um, with board reviews of the proposed business plan. We call this version two, um, but there have been many more iterations of the budget than just one and two. So um, we wanted to, for those of you who were watching version one, we wanted to show that the proposed budget today is a decrease from the last version of $1.6 million or about $21. The board had directed us to come in with a zero change from year to year in the basic assessment. And so we were able to do that by um, assuming some things for your, how you're going to pay for the insurance and your contingent through your contingency fund. Uh, and we'll go over that in the, in the future, in the upcoming slides. But also um, GRF did the same thing and they directed a no increase in their assessment, which brought that down by $8.50. So these are the areas where we affected changes. And I don't know, Jeff, if you wanted to go through in detail or if we just want to go on to the next portion of budget review. Does the, um, does the board want to know kind of some of the detail behind the changes? I, I know we went through them before, but we can certainly walk through them real quick. Let's, let's go ahead. Okay. So um, the office of the CEO, this is a reduction of $12,000 from the last version. And this is due to reducing the amounts planned for the state lobbying services and some adjustments in um, other burden accounts. Information services and general services, there are very small decreases. Um, and that's just due to some uh, changes, adjustments in the allocations. And financial services shows a reduction here of $16,000. And this is due to some reorganizational changes that we're making to achieve that savings. And security services is a more significant reduction here of $179,000. And that's due to uh, the updated allocation costs that Jeff mentioned a few minutes ago. Landscape services reduced their overtime. So that brought you another $18,000. And then we have an offsetting increase here in maintenance and construction. And this is due to a, a change that we made for um, it, at the MNC directive to move damage restoration repair costs from the operating fund um, out of contingency fund and into operating and reserves. And so what we did is we took those um, contingency fund expenditures and acknowledge that they're a, a known unknown, to um, use Carl's words. And for dry down services, we moved those costs here to the operating budget. And for actual restoration work, we moved those costs to the reserve. So what you're seeing here is what impacted the reserve, the operating portion of your budget. And um, the non-work center line here shows a reduction of $89,000, and that was due to it, some adjustments in utility budgets. And the con contingency fund uh, contribution we've eliminated. We'll go over that more on a detailed slide. And then, as I mentioned, the GRF budget was reduced by $8.58 to achieve no, no increase in their bottom line. So we'll continue on with the next portions of the presentation. Thank you. Um, with, with regards to uh, revenue sources, um, which is the next PowerPoint, um, this uh, is a, um, the non-assessment revenue, so $1.8 million. And going around the, uh, the pie chart there, you can see that fees and charges for services to residents is 35% of that. That's 629,000 approximately. This is chargeable services, permit fees, inspection fees, um, and they um, are obviously a significant part of um, the revenue for United. With regards to the next big category, investment income is um, approximately $359,000 um, is the projection for that. 
Then we have coin operated laundry revenue of $270,000. Then the next category of resale processing fees, 7% um, equates to approximately $128,000. Um, and then we have lease processing fees, which is about $125,000. And then the category under 7% there under miscellaneous, uh, again, this is approximately um, 118,000, um, 117,000, excuse me, includes uh, additional occupant fee, resident violations, and stock transfer fees. So uh, and two or three different ones go into that miscellaneous account. Uh, then we drop down into the smaller percentages of um, collection admin fees of 3%. Golf electric uh, fee of 3% and late fees of 3%. On the expense side, on um, our total expenses um, for your um, United is um, broken up into $50 million into this pie chart. As you can see, the um, largest um, category is employee compensation and related at 30%. Um, this is, equates to um, $15 million. And this is um, not only um, wages, but this is also uh, health insurance, uh, social security taxes and such. Um, property and sales tax at 12.1 12 million is the second biggest category at 24%. Outside services at 18% equates to about $9.2 million, particularly in maintenance and construction programs. Um, maintenance services, project management, and damage restoration. Under utilities and telephone, um, you see it at 9%, that is approximately $4.3 million. Um, major components of that is water and sewer costs for, and, and this does reflect a, um, a slight increase um, that we budget in there, um, doing knowing that we anticipate um, El Toro water having a rate increase um, generally on a yearly basis. So, um, and as you know, uh, they are going to have their hearing in September uh, with regards to their rate increase for this next um, year that they're putting in place. They um, normally they hold that rate in, uh, rate increase in, in before the um, fiscal year. Uh, they are uh, behind schedule on that. Um, they got the work done and now they are proposing a rate increase uh, in um, the, the water rates uh, and that hearing is in September um, and will be participation um, from the village certainly giving our input. But we did um, calculate uh, a rate increase that is um, very similar to what's being proposed so we should um, be able to cover that especially if, if that's the maximum that they put in place. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, insurance uh, is the next category at 8%. Um, that $3.8 million largely comprised of property insurance and hazard and liability insurance. The next category is materials and services at 6%. That represents about $3.1 million. Uh, largely comprised of maintenance and construction programs, interior components, plumbing, and appliances that we purchase. And the net allocation to the mutuals, um, that is at 3%, um, which is about $1.5 million. And then under other, which is 2%, that's legal fees, professional fees, and uniforms. That goes into that category. So the business plan by department um, is um, one I'll, I'll walk through fairly quickly and then certainly if there are questions uh, later, I'll be glad to answer. So with, within each of these, there are some decreases and increases. Um, as we indicated before, par partly in the case of the office of the CEO, we shifted that over to the new department, which is um, media and communications. So that's one of the reasons you see the decreased there from the 622 in 2020 to the 2021 plan of 416. Information services has a increase of 99,000. Um, the net cost for the United portion is a million 23,876. 
that due to that increase is due to an update in allocation to reflect existing service levels. Again, what we did was we also went back and looked at our tickets that are being generated through information services and allocating it more appropriately to um, United or Third or GRF, and and that's the the allocation increases uh, impacted um, United's information services budget by ninety nine thousand. Under general services, uh, the net cost uh, to this department uh, of this department to United is one million one hundred seventy three thousand one hundred and thirty one, of uh, which a million is included in the operating assessment. The budget increased the assessment by thirty four thousand dollars due to um, increases in our contracted union medical and union retirement costs. So we have a number of union employees in that in that general services area, and that's where that reflection is. Under financial services, um, you see a um, in increase of three hundred sixty one thousand dollars. The net um, cost to the department um, is four million six hundred thirty eight thousand five hundred seventy eight. Um, for the United portion, of which a million six is included in the financial services line of the operating assessment. Three million of that line is included in the property insurance line of the operating assessment. The budget increased the basic assessment by $360,000 this year, primarily due to the higher insurance premiums that we've talked about, anticipated for both hazard and liability renewals. Under property insurance, I just wanted to um, mention that we have a little asterisk there. Um, this is kind of new in putting this together. The property insurance is budgeted at $3 million, increase of $2 million due to the anticipated increase in premiums for upcoming renewal assessments for this line item varied by manner as Betty indicated before in her presentation on insurance. Under security services, um, there's a $23,000 increase to assessment. The department cost is $163,000 um, for United portion. Um, obviously, the security services is primarily under GRF, um, but there are, there are some specific charges against United. 30, and the $23,000 increase is due to a lower anticipated revenues in resident violations based on recent trend. So. Um, it, that's more of a shortfall in revenue than it is in an actual expense. <coughs> Excuse me. We on to the next one on um, PowerPoint 14, um, moving towards landscape services. The um, net cost for the department is $5,778,000 for the United portion, of which $4,360,000 is included in the operating assessment. The budget increased the assessment by 111,000 uh, due to plan adjustments and, and contracted union medical and retirement costs, as well as um, I mentioned this to Brian Gilmore had sent me uh, a question about this, um, asking for a little more detail. We also had a, a reallocation this year with regards to the director position formerly was uh, allocated in both general services and um, landscape services when we made the transition to fully um, make landscaping a full department. So we had that and there are also two additional with the Kurtz reorganization of landscaping. There are two additional managers positions in there that increased uh, landscape um, admin costs um, and these positions are in field services and also support services so that we can do um, an increased level of contractual oversight when we were contracting out more work. So we needed to make sure we had a manager who could oversee our contractual operations as well as uh, the um, new operation that I mentioned uh, where we're doing the restoration group will have a manager in that, involved with that too. So the wages that I mentioned and offsets from the union along with those two other items is what equates to that $111,000. Under human services, um, there is no change. Maintenance and construction, uh, $441,000 increase. And the budget for is 18 million. So there's a very, very large budget, 18,873,000. 
of which 5,593,000 is included in the operating budget. Uh, this increased uh, the assessment by $440,000 due to an increase in outside services for damage restoration costs. Previously budgeted in the contingency fund, which were updated in 2021 to be paid out equally from operating and reserve funds. And this was um, a, a lot of the information that we provided under version one, but for those watching for the first time, um, had uh, several meetings with the leadership of the um, United Board and MNC and came to the conclusion that it was more appropriate to have the allocation budgeted this way, um, where it was um, mutually spread between operation and the reserve fund. The increase was partially offset due to the movement of some general plumbing services into the reserve fund. Under the non-work center, excluding property and sales tax, as indicated there on the slide, this is um, actually a reduction of $105,000. Um, this category exists to account for items not directly attributed to the departments. It is primarily comprised of property tax, utilities, legal fees, interest earnings, and miscellaneous um, revenue. The net cost for the non-work budget is 15 million, almost 16 million, 15 million 964 for United portion, of which 4 million is included in the non-work center operating assessment, and 12 million is included in property and sales tax line, as indicated there. This budget decreased the basic assessment by $105,000 due to the, an el eliminated contingency budget for workers' compensation due to the change in the plan and a reduction in our bad debt expenses to reflect recent and current year's actuals, which is a good thing, and eliminated income um, tax um, budget to reflect recent year's actuals as well. The decrease was partially offset by an increase in utilities which we had planned for, and particularly sewer to reflect the projected rate increase that is being proposed. Again, uh, mentioned that the, we set aside the property and sales tax, um, which was projected um, in the property values and increased rates assessment in this line by, will vary by manner to manner. The next slide on, um, Page 15, uh, slide 15, is the operating surplus projection. Uh, um, so this is going back to um, the impact of COVID-19 and the impact of closing down uh, operations that were at first, as you know, the um, designation was essential and non-essential work. And so we had to, um, following state guidelines and, and what information we had that was being provided by the state and Orange County, as well as special agencies that were involved or special activities that um, we were involved with. Um, we had to move towards shutting down facilities as well as shutting down operations that were not considered essential. We did furlough a number of employees and some of those employees are back to work now and some of those employees are still furloughed um, throughout the the process. So um, as you can see in this chart, um, there was a monthly savings um, and a cumulative savings. I am um, going to turn back over to Betty or um, Jose, and I'm not sure who's going to talk a little bit about July, just to, so people understand why, why June and July look different than March, April, and May do. And um, But at this point in time, we're projecting at the end of the year that there will be a $700,000 um, cumulative surplus that we anticipating um, is recommended to be transferred into reserves uh, funds shown on the next slide. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, as Jeff mentioned, um, historically the boards have looked at any operating surplus and returned it to members by transferring it to reserves. And uh, that's what we recommend for next year. The numbers you see aren't um, consistent every month because we had some things happening um, in June and July. And although July only shows a $4,500 favorable variance, we actually um, don't have standard budget distributions th throughout the organization. And so we were actually anticipating a deficit 
um, that month. And so the surplus is actually about $70,000 um, because of the planned deficit in the current month of 65000 So the delta between those two, you could state this as a um, $70,000 favorable variance in July. Um, but you, in, as opposed to looking at just revenues and expenses, we have to look at budgets also to understand um, these numbers. And in June, um, it was the plumbing service was higher than uh, budget, and so you'll see a, a deficit there. And also, we had the property tax payment that hit in June. So a couple of unique things happening to. Uh, show a deficit for June, and we actually budgeted deficit in July, but you came out positive. So it's you're still contributing and growing that surplus, but now that the maintenance crews are back fully, then we estimate that any remaining surplus that you're going to have generated through December and will be offset by higher insurance costs at the renewal in October. And um, again, as I mentioned before, if those two things don't balance out, then we'll come back to the board about funding requirements. But at this point, we're projecting $700,000 surplus and a recommendation to transfer that to the reserve fund. So going to the next slide, this transitions us away from the operating budget and into reserves. You have two funds that you contribute to, the reserve fund, which is required by civil code, and that's for the future repair and maintenance of your major repair and replacement of your assets, such as your roofs and asphalt and appliances and so forth. And so we're recommending um, that you keep the contribution the same, which is currently $11.5 million. And instead of a, an assessment increase, put transfer your NESA operating surplus into the reserve to fund it that way. And then contingency fund, we estimate that you don't need a contribution next year. And we'll talk about that more in just a couple of slides. But first, let's look at the details of that reserve fund and those projected balances. So in the second column there, you can see from current year to 2021, maintaining that same assessment of $152.02. However, you will see a different amount uh, in 2020, higher than the $11.5 million, and that's because of that $700,000 transfer as a contribution. You can see that your expenditures fluctuate over the next five years, and that is the intention of a reserve. It's intended to handle those fluctuations and have money set aside for those needs when they arise without having significant impacts on your operating budget. And we do estimate increases in future years if um, these expenditures continue as planned and your revenues your surplus stays the same as we've projected then we still see a, a projected increase and this is based on a reserve study that was prepared by association reserves inc and we just received the updated numbers from them this morning and so we'll be emailing out to the board a full copy of that new reserve study. But on the next slide, you can see the new executive summary that is hot off the press, if you will. And the change in the projected starting reserve balance is a little higher compared to what we had in the past because of year, um, year in projections being adjusted. And so they are estimating that with the uh, most recent reserve contribution being 11.5 million and next year staying at 11.5 million that you are about 49 percent funded and so you're in that that safe range if you will that's represented by that bar chart that um, uses industry standards to say that you know associations that are between 30 to 70 percent funded are, are not at risk or at a lesser risk for special assessment um, than those who are below 30 percent funded and this this is an industry-wide standard not specific to Laguna Woods Village but it's a benchmark that the reserve specialist puts out there for you to measure against and then on the next slide we'll see the contingency fund uh, projection and the um, 
big difference you're going to see here is on those planned expenditures. So in 2020, you see planned expenditures of $908,792, and that's going down to almost nothing for future years. And that's because at the board uh, direction, we have taken all the damage restoration costs and moved them. We took the dry down, which was about half of the costs. You were spending about $1.8 million a year, although 2019 was an unusually high year with all the water intrusion. But on average, you've been spending about $1.8 million. And so half of that money is going to the operating fund for dry down services, and the other half is going into reserve for the restoration work. And so that leaves the planned expenditures at just very, very small um, contingencies. And really, um, we could even bring this down to zero for planned expenditures. Nothing will be spent out of this reserve or this fund and without a supplemental appropriation by the board. So something comes up during the year that's not covered in your operating budget, like an unexpected increase in legal fees or insurance costs. This is the fund that the board goes to for those kind of supplementals. However, um, leaving it at $1 million is, um, I don't know, it's not a big contingency. And so I'll never say that it's enough. And so we have projected a $1 increase each year thereafter just so that you can build that fund back up. And it's completely under the board's discretion how much money you have in the contingency fund or how your contributions would line up. So this is just a, a starting point for discussions and you can direct us um, how you wish with the 2021 through 2025 contributions. And that concludes the formal presentation and we're happy to turn it back over to the chair to address questions. And just a reminder that um, Chris Swanson will be sending out the updated reserve study um, that we received early this morning. Okay, can we go back to slide four, please? Okay, Andre, you had a question on slide four. Andre? Yes, the budget is based at uh, uh, $601 per minute per month. Uh, I'm, for some reason, your uh, calculation of total savings is only seven, uh, under a million dollars. But from the past history of the financial statement, I believe we have already accumulated close to one point, over $1.2 million, close to $1.5 million. Are you expecting, expecting the uh, more money spend uh, during this fertile period? And if it's, I assume it's uh, $2 million the whole year, we will save uh, $2 million. That's $26 per manner per month. Uh, where are they? Where do they go to at this point? Uh, I, I just, Want to okay. give an answer? That's good enough question. Okay. On, Can you answer on that, slide, Betty? yeah, on slide fifteen, because uh, it was really a question related to the operating surplus projection. And yes, you're currently at seven hundred thousand dollars through July for your operating surplus, and um, we don't do any formal return of surplus in reserves because if you don't spend money out of reserve it just stays there and it's available for when those programs are conducted but on the operating surplus uh, we want to be sure to return that to members but instead of writing a hundred dollar check for each of your members that money is um, more effectively moved to reserve okay. and okay. and so what just, i what i had mentioned andre is that any now that staff is um, back and fully operational in the MNC area, it, we don't anticipate any significant increase in surplus, but any additional surpluses you have between um, August 1st and December 31st, we do anticipate those being offset by the higher insurance costs um, at renewal after October 1st. So. 
uh, we, we just, just, instead of increasing the 700000 we we left it there and assumed that higher insurance costs were going to eat up any additional savings that you have in operating surplus. So you mentioned, uh, made a statement that staff is back fully operational. Are they fully operational at this point? Yes. Yes. And that is what they're telling you. Ernesto mentioned that he brought his full staffing back at the beginning of August. Because so I still hear uh, uh, that we we are there are non essential people, so we cannot catch up with the workload at this point. And it's, it's still uh, that, 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 that we are just going to be able to go forward, Andre. Okay, next question on okay. page five, Andre. Let's move along because we've got too many questions. What's page yes. five? Page five, staff level, 2012, you have 749. Staff, uh, uh, 2021, you have a 728. Uh, we are, uh, the biggest question we have would be the QA staff. Uh, every time we're in contract to finish each work, we need to do QA. Every time we set our own uh, employees finish their work, we need to do the QA. So we don't have to do it uh, again. Okay, make sure they do it right the first time. Uh, do we, does anybody know, do we have sufficient QA staff at this point for all the work, whether it's contractor or our own employees? That's my question. If I, if I understood it right, Andre, if, if your question is, do we have the appropriate staffing? We, we believe we do. The significance of, of um, the reduction was in two areas. One, in the, in the landscape services and in recreation. Now, recreation is based on the anticipation, again, of not opening our facilities until a full-time operation of our facilities until March of 2021 um, at that point in time. Um, so that allocation uh, of reduction of four is reflective of a significant amount of part-time employees that are will not be working until March. So when we say full-time equivalent, we don't mean uh, four individuals. It's a hour-based equivalent to four people. So in recreation, that's that. Uh, in landscaping services, we contracted out um, additional tree trimming, which was like eight positions, but we added back in the restoration um, program that I mentioned, which is five people, and that's where that 3.50 reduction in, in full-time equivalent comes out. And then the last one is the 7.40 that was mentioned. That's primarily due to the reduction in um, necessary um, pre-paint and paint um, staffing that will be required in third mutual. Doesn't really impact United. Um, third has gone to a different paint cycle and therefore the staffing levels for uh, that operation in MNC will uh, impact their budget, not necessarily your budget. That's not my question. That's not my question. My question is, do we have sufficient yes. QA staff? Yes, they feel that they have adequate staff, okay? That was so the first. So we will not use that, because I heard the directors talking about that uh, the okay. foreman cannot do the QA. And uh, I heard the MNC say we don't have a QA staff to, uh, uh, to do the QA. So my question is, QA is a very critical piece of the management. Okay. And I want to make sure. Please move on to page six. Do I have an answer on that? So just real quick. Just real quick, I, I, I do want to address it from one perspective. We, we, are, we became full-time operational with regards to maintenance and construction um, on August 3rd, and we had a significant backlog of requests that were made. The, that backlog is being caught up. Um, it would be anticipated that by September we will be back in a normal operation with regards to having addressed that backlog and getting new activities in. Um, 
so I think that's the, the first question and, and the main question that you're asking. With regards to our operations though, and I do want to make this real clear, we are still recruiting for positions that are open right now. There's five vacancies in landscaping. There's five vacancies in MNC. We do a constant recruiting to fill these positions so that we're not 100% staffed. We were just 100% in operation with regards to the people that we have. I just hope that we don't uh, sacrifice QA because we don't have enough staff. Okay, that will cause more problems. Okay, okay, on to page okay. six. All right, full-time equivalent. Um, I've, I've seen that uh, your business plan here, and I don't see any justification. All DMS stating is that we need so many people. We do so much work. We do so. We need so many people. But we have no information as far as which uh, work takes, which group takes how many people, and for how much uh, work they're going to accomplish that. Uh, I, when I hire a contractor, I don't just uh, they don't just tell me I need uh, hundred thousand dollars to this job. Okay, I need five people or ten people to do, uh, and I need a hundred thousand dollars to the job. I need to tell ask them to tell me what kind of work you need to do in order for me to pay you a hundred thousand dollars. So I'm treating VMS the same way. I need to know what kind of work they provided us that requires so many people, 728 people. I understand a lot of them are administrative, but a lot of them are field workers. Okay, so that's what the information we need justification. Okay, thank you. Please take that up into in the various committee meetings. They will tell you what work each person is doing. We'll do it in the committee meetings. We're not going to go through well, person by person of what they're doing today. No, I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting they collect information from the committees, from the uh, department, and share with us. You can skip that uh, during discussion, but those information need to be transparent to everybody. Okay? So hopefully we'll get some uh, transparency on the justification side. All right? Okay. And also, also I have a question on that. Are employees compensation increased or contractor compensation uh, fee increased. I don't understand it. We go to with contractor because we say it will save us money, but end up we add uh, uh, extra money on that, everything. And I don't understand where's the saving, what's the benefit of going to contractors, and why are we going that route? Every time we heard about contractor, it's going to save us money, but we end up uh, paying more. Can we have something that uh, hire some contract that will save us money rather than increase our operating budget? Okay. We uh, need to take that up when we hire a contract. Well, and, and Sue, to, oh, let me address yeah. that real quick. Um, let me use the landscaping as an example. When we um, went to contracting with tree trimming, um, we eliminated eight positions. Uh, you could have kept your, you could have kept, Andre, your same tree tripping operation, um, but we increased and enhanced your level of service. And by doing that, we transferred the salary savings from the employees over to the contractual agreement with the contractor. So we increased our contract to do more or higher level of service. We could have as an option, but that went through the landscaping committee. Um, we could have actually kept the level of service at the, at the same level it was before, but we were responding to the board's request and the mutual's request that we increase our, our level of service, and so we did that, and that's why there is no actual dollar necessary decrease because your level of service has gone up. Okay, let's move on to seven. Okay. Uh... Okay, on page uh, seven, the total FE saved is 23.15. But on your chart in the beginning, the total FE saved is 21. There's a discrepancy here. Which one is uh, the right one? Andre, can you repeat? In the beginning of the chart, you were telling you 
I have a hard time hearing yeah. you. If you could repeat uh, that, please. Five. Okay, on page five. All right. You keep them into page five. Oh, the page seven. Yeah, page seven right here. The total FTEs saving is 23.15. Okay. If you flip to page five. Can we flip to page five? Yes. There you go. Okay. It, uh, yeah. We have a saving of 7 point, uh, 749 to 728. So if you look at the 2020, it's about the same level as 749. So we have a 21, uh, 21 savings there. So I'm not sure if uh, uh, there's uh, any discrepancy there. There were two hires in, two people hired, correct? It, your 2020 figure is 751 FTEs, right? And our, so the oh, comparison, okay. Okay. yeah, the comparison on right. slide seven is between 2020 and 2021, just one year, not the 10 years you see on this slide okay. five. Okay, okay, my mistake. Okay. Carl, page seven. Oh, Carl, page, page seven. Yeah. Carl. Uh, uh, oh. Hold on, I'll be with you. I got you. Okay. <laughs> I have two questions on this one here, and they have to do with uh, basically the operation of these particular items here. One has to do with the fact that you indicated that uh, the new renovation group was being established within landscaping, okay, and this was going to basically be better service, okay. My question is, okay, when they're not doing renovation, are they otherwise engaged? Or do they wait like a firehouse? I don't I don't know if Kurt's on the on the on the line or not because I can't see the whole board but um, Kurt do you want to answer how that's going to operate yes they are um, working full-time they're part of the time they will be working on the uh, modernization and turf reduction projects the rest of the time they will be working throughout the community in fact they already are working throughout the community replacing dead and dying plants, replacing uh, plants that have outlived their lifespan. Um, they spend about a week in each section and they're rotating throughout the entire community, upgrading all of the landscaping that's getting kind of old and tired. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that and the people on the line behind, the, you know, that are, that are watching right now, they know that these people are not working like a firehouse where they're waiting for the next renovation to occur. Thank you. Appreciate that. Second question regarding this page has to do with this 15-year cycle. And I was a little bit surprised when you said something about it, Jeff, in the GRF meeting, and then again it's mentioned again. Uh, the last MNC committee meeting, we asked Ernesto to go back and come back to the committee and ask us and tell us why we feel that the it's not the paint program, it's the prior to paint program, how that's going to actually work. And you're saying right now, third already engaged that 15-year program, yet United hasn't done it yet because we are waiting for some feedback from Ernesto at our next meeting because uh, we don't have a clue as to whether or not the prior to paint program. We, there were some questions raised by the committee that he needed to get back to us on because of the fact we were a little bit concerned that the prior to paint program would sort of like not work on a 15-year cycle. And uh, that's the reason why United is not involved. So these particular numbers right now are for total staffing, which includes 15-year cycle for third, but still a 10-year cycle for uh, United. And we haven't gotten there yet. We, United hasn't gotten there yet. We could have gotten there if we would have had some better answers. But at this particular point in time, we're still waiting for some answers. So uh, let's say hypothetically, uh, in the next couple of three meetings or what have you, we decide to go with the 10 year cycle, uh, excuse me, 15 year cycle, and we're convinced that it works. Uh, would this affect any of these numbers? You, uh, so you're correct, oh, Carl. Yeah, no, you're, you're correct, Carl. The, 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 the process for third was, um, uh, ahead of United with regards to evaluating, um, the, the cycle. Um, with regards to the paint 
and they were obviously trying to address a um, sp particular budgetary issue, and that's one of the areas that they had focused. Um, with United, that, that information is still uh, needing to process with you and the MNC committee and then the full board. If, if, so uh, as far as a budgetary practice, um, what we were um, in, instructed to work with with third was to um, imp implement it with regards to the budget and to address it within the budget. And so we came up with a number. Uh, and again, we've told third that it's a, you know an approximate number and here's what we think is the approximate impact with regards to staffing just directly towards um, third. If United were to ultimately go in this direction, then there would be additional um, employees that would be impacted as far as number of reduction of staff. Um, if, if we went in that direction. If you choose not to go in that direction, then you are fully budgeted um, for an operation based on the current plan, which is 10 years. Okay, so, so let me understand, okay, to so make sure for all the people at the home audience, okay? Right now, this reflects a 10-year plan for United and a 15-year plan for third, and it's within by the end of the year, we get all of the information we we have we need and we make the decision as a board that we're going to go to a 15-year plan then these numbers could drop that's is that is that a correct statement that that would be correct okay thank you that's all i have on this page thank you would you mu mute your mic if you are not called on please okay andre page eight uh, about contingency fund, uh, now you, I was asking about a question about the balance, but you showed us the balance. Uh, um, can I take a look at page six? Can I pick take page, page six? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. All right, good enough. Okay. Uh, uh, so my question about the contingency fund is uh, how do we replenish it for disaster fund? Uh, as far as contingency fund use, I think we have a misunderstanding of a con contingency fund. Contingency is a project-based uh, uh, extra money. That should be included in the operating fund. If it exceeds that contingency fund, um, and we don't have any budget for that. We can always borrow from reserve fund. And civil, by civil code, we are allowed to borrow from uh, reserve fund, but we need to put it back next year. At this point, if we set up a contingency fund which doesn't follow civil code, it's a free money. We don't have to put it back, okay? And uh, uh, the budgeting time, project planning time, it, there's a tendency to, to say, as long as we can get it from the contingency fund, we don't have to really uh, give it a very accurate uh, uh, estimate. So I would suggest that we take that uh, contingency fund for the operating side contingency fund off that uh, contingency fund purpose and use reserve fund, because reserve fund require us to put it back. It will be a much better budgeting uh, process. Okay, that's my suggestion on the uh, page eight contingency fund. Okay, we'll take that up in the uh, finance meeting. So let's move on. Go, we're not going to take it up in the budget meeting. Move on to 10. Okay, uh, this, this one is uh, too much uh, uh, summary here. Um, I would like to see maybe this six, seven or so. Uh, by group, group, group within department. They're just too much summarizing and say we need so many people, but there's not enough. Why do we need so many people? Um, you know, any of these department, uh, department they have different groups. Financial services, APAR, GL, purchasing warehouse. Okay, we need to break down a little bit further so we know how much effort, uh, uh, resources we need. Security services, the same thing, landscape, everything has more detail. Now we have all these summary numbers. We lost the detail and we don't know uh, how much effort it uh, really takes. Okay, is that because we put so much people on this side or so much people on the other side? Are we short on this side? Are we short on that side? We have no information on that to 
uh, decide which budget we really uh, need and which one we can uh, 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 cut. Okay. So that's my question. And page 11. So we need a little bit of breakdown by the groups. We look at, uh, we had a question about laundry fees. This is a uh, 15% of a laundry fee, if you look at the top. And it's out of $1.8 million. These are the revenues. Okay. So we have uh, uh, $1.8 million times 15%. That's about $20,000, $70,000. That should cover the expense of two employees. I don't know whether they are full-time or not. Okay, assuming 30 minutes for uh, 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 to collect from each uh, uh, laundry, okay, that would take about uh, uh, 16, okay, to collect each month, uh, to collect uh, uh, all 170 laundry rooms. That would take... Uh, 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 well, how much that you know, lose the track on that. So we we need to calculate that whether the laundry fee collected is sufficient enough to cover our expense. Uh, I think my calculation is that we have let net about uh, uh, and I, if I understand correctly, it requires two staff to collect those fees, to collect those coins, and so if if it's a uh, uh, if, if it's not worth it, if it's not even a dent in our budget, maybe we should consider that. So that just answers some of the questions. Uh, uh, member comment on that. Maybe that that's something that we can look into. That okay. That's the, my question. That and Carl has page ten. Carl on page ten. I have uh, not allowed to speak. I'm uh, leaving the meeting. Uh, this is Reza. I have Reza, you are not I'm looking at the chat box. Not I'm leaving the meeting. I am going down the chat box very carefully. Person to person. the chat box before all these rumors <laughs> broke. You didn't allow me. And you wrote here, you have to ask, call in private. Is this a meeting in private or is this a meeting for transparency for so people can see what I have to say? Would you care to com what num what slide would you like to comment on? I want to comment on the first slide compensation. My question was, I want to know how much percentage wise of the compensation, which is the biggest uh, uh, cost, has gone to managers and and uh, directors of EMS in percentage or in dollar value. Okay, you'll have to, they'll get back to you with that number. Now I will go on to Carl on page 10. Okay, on, on page 10, okay, and it's probably in here someplace, maybe under a different guise. Uh, where is Muti and Communications showing up? Because we made a mention about the fact that we increased the Muti and Communication and we decreased the Office of the CEO. But I don't see it in here, and I'm probably, you know, maybe I just, you know, my senior, I had a senior moment or whatever. Uh, where, where is it? What, what particular <laughs> it, category does it fall under? It, it's actually a very good question, Carl. Um, it's actually all in the GRF budget. Okay, so that's the reason why it doesn't appear on this changes from version one on page ten because it's all in the GRF budget, so since it doesn't apply to us, it's not here. Is that correct. correct? Correct. Okay, that answers my question. Now, I don't know if anybody else had the same question, but that, there we go. Okay, thank you. Page 12. I have the same question, I have the same question uh, that uh, Carl has. Okay, if it's in the GRF and this office CEO, uh, when you take out all those people, do you take out the, uh, is that only the United share or is that a, I, I, I'm a little confused. If you take out that many people, that many headcounts, if you go back to the headcounts, you take out that many headcounts times three, staff. you're taking out three times uh, uh, staff go ahead. You can to put in GRF? 
Which, which slide are you specifically again, looking at, Andre? Are you looking at the prior okay, slides the, uh, for staffing? The office of CEO, the, the office CEO reduction. Okay, so slides. The previous slides. Six. Okay. So, so all of these of are reduced. All of these figures are presented for total staffing, which is shared between all three corporations. So GRF United and Third. We're not able to tell you how many FTEs specifically um, by corporation because we allocate the costs, um, not the actual FTEs. And so when we present staffing, it's in total for all three. But back on the change slide, if, you, if Chris, if you go back to the one we were just on for the changes. Six. Slide 10. Oh. Office of the CEO, the change shown here is just the United portion because this is dollars, not FTEs. Okay, so in the previous slide, you show that reduced reduction of three people and assume one third of them is United. So that reduction is about $11,762,000. That's pretty much your one FTE salary, is that right? No, this $11,000 is not related to a staffing change. This is a change in, a reduction in outside services. This is the changes also, the from version one to version services? two. This is a reduction in outside services, not staffing. Okay, so how much is the saving of the office CEO for that one FTE? Well, this is just version one to version on two changes. This is not budget to budget. So it could get confusing if we try to do both on the same slide. We're going to be okay. in future okay. slides, we're going to be looking at total budgets. Right now, this is just the changes from version one. Okay, let's go to 12, please. Let's move on. Okay, this is a very impressive. I, I like this kind of pie chart. But what I would like to know is uh, a comparison of uh, at least previous years or maybe two years before that. What's the percentage? And it's like someone like uh, uh, Reza talked about. Okay, we need to look at uh, percentage and uh, not just uh, every uh, the number, but sometimes percentage tells a story. So if we can see the percentage-wise the change. Um, that will help us a lot. If some, uh, like for example, outside services, based on what I heard from Jeff, that uh, we we provide we we switch a lot of employees to outside services, and because we add more work to them, so that's why their outside service expense uh, uh, goes up. Uh, probably last year was 10 percent. Now this year is 18 percent. Okay, something like that, because not just workload increase but their uh, scope of work increased. So uh, if that, that helps us out and look at the percentage wise, okay, hopefully we can provide that. Uh, that shouldn't be that difficult. You know, it's all from the system, information all in the system. Right, Andre, if you look in your, and, uh, we don't have it in a pie chart, but if you look in your agenda packet, um, pages 10, 11, and 12, you can see both staffing and outside service costs um, with a three-year history of actuals, 2017 through 2019, and prior year budget, 2020, and then the proposed budget. So you actually get a five-year comparison there. Okay, moving uh, on. Okay. Moving on to 13. I'm looking at 2011, 13 here. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, I'll look at that. All right. Uh, where are we at? We're on ninety-nine uh, in three. Oh. Okay. Um, if we look at uh, uh, on the right-hand side, the information services, we have a ninety-nine dollar, ninety-nine thousand dollar increase to service level. Okay, I'm seeing all kinds of service level increase associated with our uh, budget increase. 
I really want to know, you know, to find out if there's a... What I would prefer is that let's maintain the budget level and provide better services. Then we say add services, add more services next year. That we will be clearer. At this point, it's uh, very confusing. Seems like we are every time we uh, we want to provide a better service, we have uh, we add budget, but we cannot measure whether our service level is increased or not. Okay, I've been sending requests to Silvan, uh, residents request to Silvan because they are not responded. Up. What I told residents is that they need to send the request, work request to resident services. If they don't get satisfactory response within uh, after a week, they talk to me and I will pass it on to VMS. Silvan has okay, been very great. helpful. Okay, okay, thank you for that. We have a budget. Same amount of uh, requests, delayed requests, and I'm confused though. What's the better service? We need to have a way to measure better services. Can we, we are doing that, that through the KPIs. Let's move on. Carl, and, on page 13. Uh, Sue, can I make one comment about that so people aren't left with the wrong impression? Um, information services, maybe we misspoke, but this is only a change in allocation to reflect existing service levels. It is not a service um, enhancement or a service increase. It's existing service levels, um, and for United, it's based on um, the portion that increased is based on the customer service calls, so the number of calls coming in for United versus third, and your share of the customer support call center. And so this is a change in allocation to reflect existing service levels, not new ones. Okay, I can accept that. I just want to have a separate, uh, more clear interpretation rather than just lump them together and nobody knows how these numbers are allocated. Uh, okay, maybe we can get it uh, uh, during the next version and uh, explain to the residents. I like that explanation. Yeah, the okay. allocation. Can get that in the. Uh, right. The allocation report that shows every single um, work center division and the allocated cost between GRF United and Third is attached to the GRF agenda. So Monday's GRF budget meeting, the agenda has um, uh, at the very end, the last pages has the allocation report. I'm more okay. interested in United. Carl, the allocations come from GRF. Carl, go ahead, please. Okay. You'll have to uh, you'll have to accept my apology on this particular question, but I think maybe the people at home may need to have some information uh, because not all of us are accountants, and we're trying. The bottom line for them is the fact that how much they have to make their check out to at the uh, on January one of next year. So at this particular point in time, we have the contributions made to United, which we talked about. They're not going to increase. And then the contributions made to GRF, which are not going to increase. And then in there, you stipulated the fact that there would be obviously taxes, which United has to pay. Uh, and then there was an insurance uh, 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 factor, okay? But then within the budget, we talk about insurance. So I think maybe a little bit of an explanation, especially with people like me who may be a little senior, to determine is this property insurance in addition when they're going to get their bill, it's going to be the two, whatever the heck the number was for uh, GRF and then our number and then our taxes, and then there's a contingent of property insurance. But there's also discussion about property insurance being in our budget, which affects their assessment, the $602 one, whatever the heck that is, okay? So can you further explain that for those of us who may be not a little dull, let's, let's put it that way? Or maybe those of us who just don't have an accounting background. Betty, could you go through that, what they're going to see on their bill? The, yeah, the resident, you're right. They just, you know, how much am I, is my assessment going to be next year? So two-thirds of the community have direct deposit, and so the amount will change automatically. Um, but, of course, everyone receives notification of that in the assessment comparison letter before year-end. And then those who write checks will receive updated coupon books in December. Um, and it's really... 
um, we, we can't say until the budget's approved because we run a spread then that takes the unique items, property, taxes, and property insurance and assigns it out to um, the individual assessments. And what happens with the property tax, we're just a conduit, we're a pass-through for the Orange County Tax Assessor, and we don't have all that information in yet. We actually hold the um, letters open until the very end of October when we get the final updates from the Orange County Tax Assessor. So I'm just not able to estimate. Betty, Betty, I, 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 we understand that. The issue right okay. now on the table is the fact that in these documents it indicates property insurance and gives one the impression that it's in the assessment of $602, okay? Yet, in addition to that, we're saying we're then charging them whatever that number is divided by 6000 or what have you, okay, in addition to the property insurance that's already in the assessment. It gives the impression that we're double dipping. That's my question. So let's go back Not to slide dipping, nine. But I think it's a little bit of an explanation. Chris, I don't want anyone thinking that there's double dipping going on, so let's go to slide nine. And um, the property insurance line there, I added a per manor per month amount, but it's in orange font because it's not in the basic assessment. But we wanted you to see kind of the total cost, the, the total look at, at insurances, um, knowing that it's $3.8 million for these lines of insurance, which is everything besides, um, it does not include medical costs, which are up in the payroll categories. It does not include earthquake uh, insurance. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it, no, the um, workers' compensation. Uh, those are both up, the medical costs and workers' compensation are up with the staffing-related costs. And so w the basic assessment does not include a per man or per month property insurance, but I showed an example here, an average of about $40 per unit per month for property insurance. But the, the amounts will range from zero all the way up to $50, depending on the, the value of the home. And this has always been done that way. This year is nothing different than any yes. other year. Is that correct, Betty? Yes. That's all I wanted to know. So now everybody understands there's no double dipping going on here. It's a separate entity on your bill. And the fact that we tried to keep these numbers the same each year, there are two uh, variables that we can't control. One of them is the taxes, and the second one is the insurance. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. I have a question about the uh, double dipper. Okay. May I ask a question? Sure. Go quickly. Okay. On the business plan, uh, in the past, I've used to used to see that uh, there's there's a calculation how much does uh, each uh, employee cost, and also add on burden costs. Uh, is Anthony there? You were you have a question. You always have a question about the burden cost. Okay, so my question, you know, uh, I didn't realize uh, what's the impact of that. I was always confused. Uh, so what I see calculation at this point, we don't see that. By the way, we don't see that unit cost, uh, employee cost, and uh, uh, average cost and uh, burden cost anymore. So we have no clue how those numbers come up with at this point. And what uh, and the biggest problem I have that burden cost is that for every department there's a burden cost from other departments supporting this department. But if you look at every department cost, their full time employee pay rate is already calculated in there. So it seems like they're working extra overtime to support that burden cost. At this okay. point, I'm, I'm confused. Why is it? Why do we, that's that's to me is a double dipper. This some somebody is what we're saying is somebody for this department we pay uh, this person full time rate. For another department we charge this person another two hours, three hours, five hours work. So this person should work fifty hours to sixty hours a week rather than forty hours a week. So I'm a little bit confused on the burden cost and all these numbers, and they don't show up anymore. I don't understand what is the reason for the disappearing of all these uh, calculation numbers. May okay. I? 
Uh, let's move on to the budget. Let's stick with the budget, and then we'll more get that is the business date. plan. That okay. is the business plan. Let's okay. worry about more data that we want. You can add, put together. We can put together a list of what other data we want. Let's move on so we can get through this meeting. Okay. Uh, we've discussed where media and communication is. Um, page 15. I, I don't understand that. Let's go to page 15. Okay. The first one I got a miscalculator. The second one, page 15, we can see page 15. Okay, the highest one is $350,000, 335.66. So my assumption is that average it's $60,000 a person for the furloughed person, okay? I think it's a little bit of overestimate because most of our uh, furloughed are lower end employees, low salary employees. So let's just say $60,000 a year. That that equivalent to five thousand dollars a month. If you divide by three hundred fifty thousand dollars by five thousand dollars a month, you are uh, for, uh, uh, operating surplus uh, saving for, from the employee side will be seventy thousand dollars. The most there may be other material savings, other things there. For April, it's about uh, fifteen, uh, about thirteen. Five thousand dollars, about thirteen people. For May, it's about 65, 67 people. And for June, it seems like either there's some accounting adjustment or something that you increase the, the uh, uh, budget uh, expense by 10, uh, by 10 people. So I'm a little bit confused. Uh, how much saving do we have from furlough? How many people do we have uh, furloughed? And how come these numbers are not showing up uh, on these charts? Okay. The well, our half, half of the count is our count. You've got to realize the other half is third and GRF count. So we aren't going to see all of the operations. Well, and I just want to, po is, I want to point out, Sue, if I may, that these numbers you're seeing here are um, comparing your revenues to your expenses. It is just strictly how much revenue came in and how many expenses went out. This is your total budget. This is not just compensation. This includes outside services, property taxes, everything. And so there's lots of fluctuations throughout the year in your expenditures. And so it would um, be confusing if you look at these numbers and think it relates to just staffing and furloughed employees. Okay, so this is for United. This is not the, the whole BMS, right? This is Correct. just United, but this is your entire okay. set of revenues and expenditures. Right. So, okay, uh, let me do some calculation because based on my, cal uh, uh, my understanding, going through the financial statement, seems like we have a lot more savings on that, okay? Uh, we have less revenues, but on the United side, because we don't depend on too much on the revenue, okay, our revenue will be the laundry, would be the just the violations, All right, compliance. Andre, go ahead and do your calculations. Let's move on to your questions. Okay. So I will ask that. I will get the numbers out uh, uh, next time, uh, uh, in, uh, at the end of this week. Okay. Okay. Page 17. Uh, page 17. Page 17. Okay. We have the uh, investment income. Uh, if we look at the two, 2020, $287,757. And the investment total is $12,235,000. So our expected uh, investment income uh, uh, return rate is 287000 divided by $12 million. That's about uh, 24, 2.4%. Is that correct? It's probably close, yes. Yeah, 2.4%. Okay. And for 2021, that's about 3%. Okay, 2022, yeah. that's, a two point, that's about another 23 2.4%. Okay, is that a good estimate? Because I don't see the consistency here. Okay, usually there's a fixed amount of uh, 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 
uh, assumption in there. Just use that fixed amount. Now, uh, we I do don't know have how a, you get these investments from here. Andre, we do use a different assumption for the current year, uh, which is lower, and then we're more optimistic in our future projections of interest. So there is a difference between current year and future years. Yeah, but you weren't okay. optimistic. Uh, okay. Uh, that's good. I'm not sure you have an algorithm. Could you share with us your algorithm and how these numbers are derived? That would definitely help out. And then nobody will have any questions on this one, how these numbers are derived. Okay? Page 19. Okay, now I just want to make sure that we have the, we will have the uh, uh, information in there. Okay, investment income. All right? Uh, page, is that contingency of uh, amount enough? If there is no expenditure, okay. that's plenty. If there is expenditure, well, then we're going to have to worry about it. Yes, that's what I, we need to uh, set up the uh, uh, change the contingency fund uh, uh, rule and says no more operating fund keeping in this contingency fund. You do your and calculation and you come up with your best estimate. And if you're really short, we can go after reserve fund. That's what the reserve fund is for. But the reserve fund, there's a limitation. Okay, there's a restriction. You okay, have to put it already, within a year. That has been passed. We are going to be doing that. She already stated that this is not going to be used without the board's approval. So let's move on. Well, the question I have is, right now the board is, uh, has awareness on that. In the future, like in the past, a few years, the board doesn't didn't have the awareness on that. They just approved that. So we need to change the rule and make sure that it will not happen again. If that's something that we don't want to happen, if we already put a contingency fund somewhere else and we have the reserve fund for unexpected uh, uh, expense, then let's take that uh, condition out of there. So operating contingency fund cannot go into this contingency fund. And let's okay. just might as well change the name in case people misunderstand. Okay, moving on. Thank you, Manny. I believe yeah, I'm next because this is done. Yeah. So I'm calling on you, Manny. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go through a couple of slides because they're all pretty well interrelated. And I'd like to start with chart nine, please. Uh, I am. Very glad that, that uh, Betty covered this because uh, this is pretty important. A lot of the members out there are concerned about uh, refunds and reductions in assessments and so on. And what many members, including directors, don't recognize is that when they get their letter, there's two separate line items below the assessment amount. For example, right now, our assessment is projected to be $601.98. However, that's before the additional line item for property taxes, and that's before the additional line item for property insurance. There is no double dipping. And if you will look at the summary of the assessments, there's only really two numbers on there that you can really trace to the financial statements, uh, to the breakdown of income and expenses by uh, cost item. One of them is property taxes, and the other one is insurance. You, you can't do that with any other categories because some of the other categories, for example, employee compensation, what you will see on here is a portion that's taken care of through operating expenses. Another big portion of that is in reserves. So I wanted to cover that here because the important thing here is that my assessment for insurance last year was $12.00. And that's a little less than the average. I think the average was like about 14 or 15 because it's, it's based on the value of the unit, just like your property taxes, uh, except property taxes are based on your value, which may be lower than the value if you use top 60 or 90. But getting back to insurance, every member, no matter what, is going to see an increase of 24 to $27 per month in their assessment. And that's going to come as a shock to them because, you know, we were having problems with insurance. Okay, the next chart I'd like to go to is chart 10. Uh, 
Okay, on this chart here, what I want to emphasize is that the original version one had an increase in assessments of $21.17. And when you look at this, you think, oh, wow, they really cut this down. But you have to recognize a couple of things. First of all, you eliminate that GRF, 858. We have nothing to do with that. It affects us, of course, but it's good that enough pressure will put on by the mutuals to get them to recognize we don't want them to increase assessment. So that was their increase. There's no increase now, but their assessment is still the same as last year. The next one up above that is $10 to the contingency fund. And what we've done there is we've shifted those expenses into uh, operating costs. And we split some of the plumbing costs between operations and reserves depending on what it was. So when you take that out, the only effect that DMS or the finance department has done that affects our assessment is only $2.50. And I, I need to emphasize that because if you look at the version one, that for operating expenses had an increase of $12.85. So this, they will only do that down to $10.40. So it's still a big number in the assessment. And the only reason you don't see that is because of other offsets. Okay, let's go to chart um, 15. That's 11, 15. Okay, now, this 700, <clears throat> I agree with the 700,000. I think it would be more like a million dollars by the end of the year. They're going to be slow in getting back up to speed as far as uh, providing uh, painting and some of these other services. Uh, granted, uh, they came back on board as of August the 3rd, but like my unit, it's not scheduled. It was originally scheduled to be painted last November, and what I've heard is they'll, they might get to it by late September. In addition to the $700,000, there's not about $2.4 million in savings in reserve expenditures. So, so through July, the extra funds that the mutual has between both operating and reserves is over $3 million. And that hasn't been mentioned here, but I'll, I'll show you where it comes into play. Okay, next slide I want to show is uh, 17. <clears throat> okay, here's what I'm saying. If you look at 2020, and it shows $12,235,000, that's because the regular assessment is $11,535,000. And a little asterisk explains that they added to that another 700000 which is a surplus available from operations that were saved that will be transferred from operating funds into reserve funds. Okay. Uh, I'll digress a little bit to answer Andre's question. Now, Andre's question about the investment income, totally wrong. Okay. That income is based on the reserve balance. Okay. It's not based on the assessments. So that 287000 for example, would be based on the average of that $18 million on the right-hand side during the year. Same thing with the next year, that $338,000, not based on 11000 I mean $11,535,000. It's based on the average balance in the reserve fund, which is probably going to be somewhere between $18 and $15 million. Now, I'll come back to my main point. $11,609,000 was what was forecasted a year ago. And that's what I'm saying in my opinion, that's not going to be $11,600,000. That's going to be like closer to $9 million, which, according to my estimate, is that the reserve balance at the end of the year, without that $700,000, would be about uh, $19,400,000 before you add the $700,000. Now, why is that significant? The reason why that's significant is because they did make these changes, but a lot of that was just shuffling numbers around. I prepared analyses that I just finished last night. I haven't had time to distribute it, and I'll email these to all of the directors. Look at the difference in expenditures between 2020 and 2021. Okay, granted, 
six hundred fifty thousand was transferred in there from uh, contingencies. But still, you got fourteen million two hundred thousand dollars or fourteen million one hundred thousand dollars compared to the prior year. That's over three million dollars, and that's without even considering the over two million dollars. I think it's going to be saved. So I think you could have about a five million dollar difference between the two years. And that's what my analysis shows. My analysis shows that there are increases in some of these things that should be cut back. And, I, and I'll give you some examples. Even though they uh, made some reductions in uh, maintenance expenditures from the special meeting we had, what they didn't tell you was they increased carpentry by $40,000. So I'm saying why. That should be taken out. Uh, building structures, I, I believe the amount provided there is way over provided by $700,000. You've got some other items. There's over a million dollars just in the budgeted amount. You would still have an increase over the prior year. So uh, that's where I believe the reduction should come from to us at that $23 to $26 increase in assessments. I believe that $152, I know to all you people it's sacred, but that $152 should be reduced to $127. That's a $25 increase. And that way, the members will not see an increase. And believe me, I don't think they're going to be happy unless there's no increase. And you can justify easily right here with the numbers I'm reviewing with you. This is not what you are hearing from VMS, because they don't look at these numbers in detail like I do. All they want to do is make sure they've got plenty of money to be able to provide the services without having any pressure. And believe me, not reviewing the reserve expenditures, there's a lot of improvements that could be made in how right, it was monitored, how it's contracted. Anyway, believe me, this needs to be looked at. I'll be sending you this information. So now, now, do you understand my, the points that I've made here and why they're important? That's where that's where all the all the let's call it uh, emergency money comes from. It comes from this plug figure right here. They cannot justify that almost fifty million dollars in expenditures based on any prior year as well as it's coming year. That's strictly a guess. That's a safe cushion. That's all it is. Okay. Thank you, Manny. I think we're done. Um, with this, we're going to take a quick vote here, whether to accept or not to accept, and I'll do a roll call. Carl, are you comfortable with this budget? Please turn on your mic. I had a couple of questions still in the chat box. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead and answer your questions. That version one had $500,000 or so that was supposed to go into the contingency fund as a result of the excess amounts that we were supposed to be accruing by the end of the year. And uh, I don't see that any place. And the thing right now is with the $4,000 that was indicated as being uh, money that was available in July, that was because we had bills due that we accrued for over the whole year. So my question is, okay, those bills will have been paid, and so in August and September or what have you, okay, we're saying we're not going to have, we're going to be zero at that point, meaning we're not going to accrue additional funding. So I don't know how that works out. And what happened to that $500,000 that we were supposed to put into the contingency fund that we said would be available to us at the end of the year? Yeah, Carl, we revised our year in projection, and um, we did previously anticipate more of a projection at year end, but then we put in the anticipated increase in the um, insurance program as of October 1st, and that ate up the, um, the portion, of, and so we just removed the, the portion of the surplus recovery we had going into contingency fund, and put everything remaining into replacement fund. 
Does that make sense? That may be, but the thing right now is we were talking about the fact that the contingency fund had been depleted, and we said, well, we put that half a million dollars in there so that we would basically reinforce the contingency fund, even though we redistributed all of our allocations within the operating and reserve fund, but we still need a contingency fund, and that $500,000 is going to be a cushion. And right. now you're saying it's gone, but you made men you did not mention anything about it during this whole discourse here. So and that was a big Chris, number. We talked about contingency being at an all-time low right now. Yeah, Chris, if you'll go to the um, contingency fund slide, a couple more slides. I think it's the last one. So yeah, we had it on the um, the slide for the projected surplus, and I'm sorry I didn't point that out um, as far as comparing it to prior version, but we did revise our surplus projection down to $700,000, and since it was much less than was anticipated in version one, um, we did not put a surplus recovery into the contingency fund. However, also since version one, you made a decision to move the dry down services to operating and the restoration to reserves. And so we were, that took out the planned expenditures. And so really now you have no planned expenditures unless something unforeseen comes up in your operating budget and you need to go to the contingency fund if there's no offset in other line items in the operating budget. So if you have a total operating deficit, you would come here to the contingency fund and do supplemental appropriations. So um, if you want to have a contribution to this fund, you certainly can. We just brought it down to zero and um, assumed you were gonna hover right around the million dollar mark. And um, that's possible because of moving that very um, unpredictable, predict you know, contingency for damage restoration out of here, no longer funding it from, from contingency. No, that, that's true, uh, uh, Betty. The thing right now, however, is the fact that what is the number that we currently have in our contingency fund because we're not going to be supplying any money to it, which means whatever we've got, we've got. And as you mentioned, there's a known unknown, and that's basically with regard to risks, okay? And I don't know about you, but I don't specifically think that any risks are going to be less next year than they were this year, even though... I always said that we needed to have that line item for water intrusion as a line item in the budget because we know we're going to pay it every year, but there's still a contingency requirement because under the circumstances, we have, we have a known unknown out there. There, there. there are things that go bump in the night, okay, that we have no money officially in a line item into our budget. So we were going to use that $500,000, and now it's gone, and it seems like nobody questioned that, and I have a question about that. And I think that $500,000 is something that we need to address. And then are we sure that we're only going to get $700,000? I'm in, I'm in line with Nanny, okay? We, have a, we are going to be accruing some things over the next number of months here that we're not going to pay out because of the fact that we've paid some of these bills already. So why are we saying only $700,000? And how can we leave our contingency budget basically uh, – without any money, if you will. I don't know what the number is. Please provide that to me. Yeah, right now you have about $660,000 in your contingency fund. And one of the things we're going to bring to a future finance meeting is the recommendation to reclass the items that qualify as reserve expenditures to the reserve fund. And so um, that will give you some relief in the balance. And then also um, the... Um, surplus issue, yes, you might end up with more than $700,000, but it is super unusual that we treat the surplus in the current year. Normally, we wait till the, the year ends and the audit report comes out in April, and then we treat prior year surplus. It is very unusual to treat current year surplus because you just don't know. Lots of things happen in the in the fourth quarter. Uh, we have adjust, some adjustments that are only made at year end, like adjustment to your um, your workers' comp liability, and so those balance sheet items, if they have an unfavorable effect on the income statement, we usually like to wait until all of those adjustments are made, the audit is finished, and then treat prior year surplus. 
because we're trying to be proactive here and let you treat your current year surplus, we are being conservative and only treating $700,000. Um, if you go higher than that and it doesn't materialize, then it's a shortfall in your budget for next year. So um, we're being very aggressive with the timing of returning it um, as instead of waiting for it to be a prior year surplus. It's a current year surplus, and so I don't recommend going higher than the $700,000 because of the, upcome, the uncertainty surrounding the upcoming insurance renewal. I, I think that maybe the way you want to approach this is look at your contingency fund um, after we address the, the expenditures that qualify to come out of reserve. And, um, but if there's a desired balance you want to have, $1 million, $2 million, we, we can get you there with adjusting the, the future year uh, planned contributions. Well, okay. Last year we said we were almost like 1.2 million, and we we didn't put any money in the contingency bond. We reduced it this year. We reduced the amount of money we have in that fund because of the water intrusion events. True, but there were other things. Okay, that's the reason why we have contingency. It's a known unknowns, as you mentioned before, and as I've always mentioned. But here's the other thing right now. You keep on saying that we have to think about the fact that we, we don't know what the final insurance number is going to be. So this is where my own mind and possibly the people in the studio audience will specifically issue. We talked about the fact that we're going to have them pay the insurance as a separate line item, yet now we're saying it's coming out of the budget. So what are the two differences there? Because they get the feeling like, why am I paying for insurance out of the budget and also paying for insurance as a separate line item? And that was my question before, and you mentioned it again just now in talking about the contingency because we can't fund it anymore because we're thinking we're going to have some additional money that we need to have available for this insurance. Right. So I'm a bit confused. Okay, and maybe it will help. I'm going to ask Chris to pull up the agenda um, and bring us to the business plan. Um, the United Business Plan that shows the asterisks uh, for the property tax and the property insurance because it is a budgeted item and I want you to see that it's in the budget. It's, it, I don't mean it's a separate item that it's not in the budget, um, just the per manner per month calculation isn't in the basic assessment. So um, we're just going to give Chris a second to pull up the agenda, page 9 of 22. And try to blow it up a little on the screen, size-wise. He's going to try to zoom in so we can see it. Betty, can I make a comment that will clear up real quickly? Well, I just want to show visually. Um, because this is the way I... I just want to show visually. I visually, but let me just explain real quick. Yeah. So just real quick, Manny, can I finish and then you, you can take over. But Carl, if you look, and I apologize, we don't have line item numbers on here, but um, towards the bottom of the page in the middle, you know, you see property tax and property insurance. The property tax budget is 12158000 and the property insurance budget is 3021000 So, oh, Chris, don't move. There's too much of a lag. <laughs> We just went to the comparison report, so don't don't move it. Um, and so those the twelve million and the three million those are in the budget. But you look to the right, and there's asterisks. I can't show you the per manner per month because it varies by individual unit. So it's in the budget. It's just not in what we call the basic assessment. When we're talking about $601.98, we're talking about a basic assessment that is shared and common to everybody. But there are two pieces of the budget that will be calculated for a monthly assessment amount unique to each manner. And so I'm sorry if we gave the wrong impression, but it is a budgeted item. It's not um, below the budget or below the line or anything. It's just calculated later after the budget's approved. So, okay, Betty, can I comment does not, does can I comment that number? Okay, let Carol wait and let Manny comment. Hi, okay. Okay, Chris, could you, could you scroll that down to the bottom so I can see the bottom figure? 
Good. Stop right there. Okay, Carl, what you don't understand, or most people or directors don't understand, if you take that $601.98 times 12 times 6,323, you will not come up with 60 million, whatever it is. You will come, probably come up with 50 million. You have to go up and add those two numbers to it. Go up, scroll up a little bit. Scroll up, please, Chris. Right there, stop right there. You will probably come up with that's $15 million. You will probably come up with a figure that's like $45 million because you have to add that 12 million and a three to come back to that. And that is what is collected. However, if you divided that 12 million by 6,323, you would probably get a different number for each person because it's based on value. So it's in the budget. However, it's a separate line item. And that's why I was concerned about insurance. Even though this shows zero, some people are going to get a bill like myself. Last year, my property insurance was 12 bucks. This year, it's going to be like 36, 37 bucks. I'm going to see a $24 per month increase. Now, do you understand what we're talking about? Supplemental to what's already budgeted because of the no, of the no, it's in the budget. It's just that you you have to calculate 601,000 by 6,323 by 12, and you will come short of that 60 million dollars by the 12 million and the 3 million, because those are billed in different amounts to each member. However, when they bill all those out, they will collect $12 million from each member, from total members. They will collect $3 million from total members. Do you understand? I understand. I'm trying to make sure the people, okay. the home it's audience, not, understand. It's not It's, not it's, not it's in the budget. 60198 is what our assessment is. 20560 is what the GRF assessment is. And then what I'm yeah. hearing here is there is going to be taxes, which everybody pays taxes, death and taxes, that's a definite, uh -huh. okay? And then there's an insurance line that supplements whatever is budgeted in the 60198. It doesn't supplement in versus for it. And you are going to see an increase of about 24, 25 bucks per month for that item. That's my point in my whole presentation was we don't want that increase. We I want understand, that you understand, but I don't think the average Joe Blow understands why it's budgeted. They're not going to like it. I mean, Remember, that's the whole point like right it. now, okay? The thing right now is we keep on talking about this insurance because it's a major issue now because these, these numbers are coming in like telephone numbers, okay? And as a result of that, the people at home, they don't care about a lot of things except for the fact that bottom line. How much do they have to make their check out for each month? That's what Absolutely. they care. Absolutely. Absolutely. We just have one fifty two by twenty five bucks. That's so the thing right now is All right. the thing right now is okay, we've got a situation right now whereby we have contingency does not get supplemented with the uh, half a million dollars that we thought we were going to have from this year. That means we're going into next year with only six hundred thousand dollars in contingency. And that, I, I personally am uncomfortable with it, but you know what? I don't want to charge these people any more money than what we have to at this particular point in time. I'm a little bit concerned about the fact of what they're going to get, have to pay because this year has been a hell of a year. So, I mean, I'm not going to ask them to basically increase the contingency because that means they're increasing their at monthly payment. But at the same time, we're going into this year with only $600,000 in the contingency fund, even though we're not going to do water intrusion. But I thought we had a half a million dollars more in it, and now I get told we don't. That's a problem for me. Okay. We could uh, have, I get my finish. We can move money from the reserve into the contingency, and we will discuss that at the finance meeting. Uh, I have a question about the uh, reserve uh, uh, percentage. Okay, go okay. ahead. Uh, I think it's page 18. Maybe we can look at it. I, I forgot. It went through it so fast. I couldn't even read it. Can we go to page 18? I think it's page 18, the reserve percentage, the chart, that red, red uh, yellow, green chart there. Can we go back there? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, here, this reserve percent found at 49%. Uh, my question is, so 
why are we setting up at 49%? Who approved it? I thought that's the board's responsibility to approve it. Why is VMS decide to change it to 49%? May I ask? VMS did not change it to 49%. That is the number that was computed. It has nothing to do with reality. It is just no. a worthless number. It's worthless. So, or, it oh, now why do we do this? Now? Why do we do a funding plan? On, on the whole idea or? is to make it as real. And last year, we had it at 39%. Last year, when the uh, consultant came over here and the calculator, based on okay. last year, we were about $10 million. Well, I answer uh, your question, like please. And, Andre, to answer, okay. your, to answer your question, the um, reserve specialist generates this report, not VMS, and what we did is we gave him a different projected starting reserve balance because we're, we're another month into the year and um, we asked for revised year and projections. And so with the revised year and projection, there's a, new, a different amount for January 1, 2020, 2021 as the very first number you see here, the starting reserve balance. And so as we get new information, we gave the reserve specialist the most up-to-date projection for that starting point on the reserve balance. Um, Chris is going to pull up on the screen the reserve funding plan. You said um, you chose at the last board meeting for the budgets that you wanted to go with threshold funding, which means that you have assessments that don't ever fall below a certain threshold that the board has set. And um, Jose is going to remind me what number that is. Is it 10 million? 10.6 million dollars is your threshold. And so Chris, if you can just zoom in a little, there we go. So this is the funding plan um, that we received this morning that relates to threshold funding and um, with that starting reserve balance of 18.1 million. As Manny said, he, he thinks it's going to start out even higher than that, and that's great, but I think that's going to help alleviate you in future years. You see 23, 24, and 25, you dip down below 30% funding, and um, there are significant increases in the reserve contributions. You can see we're starting in the middle of the page there at the top row at 11.5 million as reserve contributions. And you can see the reserve specialist has you going up as high as um, 17 million just within the next five years. And so any money that you save this year um, or an, and next year is going to help you avoid future significant increases in these reserve contributions. So I would not recommend anything, um, any reduction from your current funding level because it's just going to put a higher burden on um, the boards next year or the year after. Does that mean that when these numbers are going to change all the time and because we cannot provide them the up-to-date information, then it's meaningless. No, it's very meaningful. It's the opposite. It's right. We have another month of financials and uh, updated projections that we gave them. This is now your reserve study. This is the actual study that will be on your board agenda for approval when you adopt the budget um, in September. Chris is going to send this out to all of you, but last meeting you decided that you wanted to pursue threshold funding method, and so this is the threshold funding plan. Um, which doesn't change your 11.5 contribution in 2021. Okay, we're ready. Just, I'm going to take a vote now. I'm done, Andre. You're done. Sure, sure I was next. Sure, I was next. You have. I'm in the chat box. Yeah, you know I speak. Yeah, you're on the Okay, here's what I have to say. The last time the uh, reserve study was done internally, our fully funded balance was over $100 million. And as I had reported in prior years for the last four years, even that figure has some errors in it. They corrected a lot of them, but it still has some. Okay? And this number right here of $37 million without any question is understated by over $70 million. So there's 49%, 38%, whatever. 
it is totally bogus. And and, uh, and to me, I, I can't understand why why you can't see that. So it's meaningless. That's why we have threshold. Because if all of a sudden, Andre, you wanted to adopt forty nine percent. We have to make a humongous special assessment to try to get there. So read your book. Look at the numbers. Try to understand it. Thank you. Okay. Well, okay, let's not people and we're I done. Have another I have another question about uh, Betty's statement that uh, uh, whatever board decided $1 million or $2 million for the contingency fund, they can do it. Okay. Uh, it's not something that we can just pull out of the air that decide $1 million or $2 million, okay? We need to do some analysis. We need to do some recommendation, and it needs to be based on expert advice, okay? We hired a VMS expert to do the job, and now we want a board to just pull out numbers from the air. That's not the right way to do it. I hope VMS can make a recommendation as far as contingency fund. What is the right number to meet all those obje uh, 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 objectives of all those criteria? What is the right way to do it? What is the right number? Give us the number. Then we can make a Thank choice. You, okay. I think the board Thank responsibility you, is to come up with recommendations. Yeah, we what? can. Okay. Enough, We're going forward now. Carl, what is your vote? I'm uh, I'm not happy with the fact that we're going in there with uh, not that five hundred thousand dollars in contingency. I don't want to increase the amount of money that's in here as far as the uh, the assessments are concerned. So I think we need to do some redistribution and get some money into that contingency fund somehow, whatever. Uh, and uh, so I'm voting no. Andre, there's a lot of unanswered questions. You know, uh, we haven't talked about business oh, planning. I don't care your doc. I don't care your for your comments. And What's your vote? The, our constituent, why I vote what I vote. Okay, I agree with uh, uh, Carl that the contingency fund is not quite there yet. Okay, we need definitely to fill in. And we need uh, uh, VMS to provide us a recommendation, you know, maybe alternatives. Okay. What are the... Your vote is no. Juanita. I voted no. Juanita. Sorry, I lost my cursor there for a minute. <laughs> uh, my vote is definitely yes, and I would like to thank uh, Financial Services and Jeff for all of the hard work that they have done in putting this in and getting us to a, uh, a level assessment from last year. Okay. Brian, Brian still here or not? I guess not. Manuel. Okay. Uh, my, my vote is only no because I would like to see them reduce the uh, – reserve assessment by uh, $25 per month. Uh, regarding the contingency fund, uh, at the next finance committee meeting, I, I'm going to propose a couple of things. First of all, uh, we are going to uh, get the GPI money. Hopefully that will go in there. Uh, we need to reimburse the fund for all these electrical uh, energy savings. That should go in there. And I also believe that as of now, starting, let's say, in September, that uh, the policy that we're going to use from here on out of uh, paying certain uh, water intrusion costs like replacements versus cleanup costs, which would come out of operations, that we implement that starting in September, which will, you know, take all the pressure out of the contingency fund. So uh, my vote is no, only because I, I'm pleased with what VMS has done. They worked hard on this. However, I don't think they've done enough. And it'd be very simple to just reduce that assessment uh, for the reserves. There's going to be plenty of money in there, like $25 okay. a month. Thank you very much. We, we need to no. move on. Anna. My vote is no also. Okay. Um, I'm here. Can I go? Yeah, I see you here. Uh, what do you, Elsie, do you have enough information to vote? Uh. I would, I think, if I knew what the what we're voting on. I know that sounds stupid, but as you noted, I 
I was really late. Sorry, uh, I, it's a long story, but I had to chair that meeting. So, uh, is this on whether to accept staff's recommendation? Right. That's exactly what we're voting on. Like the last review said, right? Because Juanita and I went over and over and over it yesterday. And uh, I hear what Nanny says, but if, if, I, if I can vote in this, uh, I vote mm -hmm. yes. But if you don't think that's appropriate, you know, I'll leave no, you. Fine. If you've gone over the material, you're fine. Okay. In that case, I vote yes. We have seven people voting. We have one, two, three, four no's, and three yeses. Who was the um, last yes after Elsie? I'm sorry, I didn't get that for my minutes. Sue. Okay. Uh, we would, I, I need to people. No. We need to give me a list of the changes that have to be made before we can, they can go forward because they've done their hardest work on this and we need to have the list of changes that you want before so you could vote yes in September. I, uh, I uh, sir, I, 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 Juanita, may I remind you that at the beginning you asked Tony what his vote was before he had to leave? Oh, that's right. Yes. That was yes. Okay, go ahead and put Tony as yes. So we have a no fails. I, I understand. No I think there are other no's here, like Netta and Carl and Andre, that need to put together a list of what would they would need to know, what the changes they would need to have before they could vote yes. And we need to have that exact listing because these poor people have to go make another budget. And we're asking them to do that. Okay. Thank can you. I leave? Can I leave? Are we all done? It's adjourned. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm assuming that Cash never came on. I see a C, but I didn't know who it was. No, Cash told me he wasn't showing up. I called okay. him. Okay. Um, Sue, I have got mad because he was Sue I have a comment. Yeah. Um, we sure. we need direction today because Tuesday we are issuing the GRF budget. Their meeting is very early. The first of September falls on a Tuesday, and so we have to issue the um, the final budget for their adoption on this coming Tuesday. To calculate the budgets, they have to be all together. The only thing that you can change without affecting the other corporations is your own reserve contribution. So if you want to consider your contingency fund and your reserve fund, you can do so and get to it back to us, um, but you have to do it as a board. So you'd have to set up a special board meeting very quickly, and the only thing that you can decide on is reserve contributions. Um, is everybody understood that everything else stays as is? Um, yeah, no. I thought we had until September for final approval by the board. Right, but we, have to, but we have to. We have your deadline. Final approval in September. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, this is just your deadline, not I, ours. It, at your board meeting. Final approval by the board in September. You will be approving your budget in September. Today's not approval of the budget. It's accepting the budget as proposed so we can turn it into a resolution. You'll be adopting your budget in September. And I'm just making sure everybody understands that after today, the only items that can change are your reserve contributions or your projected surplus. But we can't change staffing or materials and supplies and so forth. Where's the documentation for that rule? Where's the documentation for that rule? On the budget calendar, it has a dead, on the budget calendor has a deadline for changes. I want to see a governing document or data sterling or something that states it has to be that way. We what can asked, you give us? Uh, we asked this information during the first budget meeting. The answer was, we will provide you later. Now, this is the later time. The information is still not available. And uh, the only instruction we had is you have to approve it, otherwise we are in trouble. The process is totally wrong. We, the board cannot be bullied to just sign up this uh, budget. This is your budget. This is your budget, and we're ready for your input. All right. 
Stu, may I ask, did Brian give you his vote before he left? As treasurer, no. we, we need his vote. Okay. I will be calling Brian. Well, no, we can't change the votes now. He's not going to have the meeting. I'm sorry. It's right now. Set up another meeting on Monday for this, and I, I need everybody's okay. input today on what they want changed. Monday, we will have another Look at meeting. Mine. Good. Look at mine. Please, please. Please do not be on the board for denying this uh, uh, this uh, budget. If we had everything done, uh, given us what we want, we could have made the decision, okay? But if we don't have this uh, uh, information we want, we cannot make the decision. We cannot be rubber stamped to say, because we don't have the time, because you don't provide us the information, we have to approve it. I am not Thank asking you, you to approve it. We are asking no. you to... Us what well, I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you. I'm saying you have to approve it. Otherwise, we cannot meet the deadline. Okay. Is I the meeting understand. over? What? Is the meeting over officially? The meeting is over. The discussion.